the Nebraska Broadcasters Association Hall of Fame welcomes Marty Raymond Schneider to the ranks of Nebraska's legendary broadcast professionals. I grew up in a town about 100 miles south of Chicago. I had uh, grew up in my dad's drugstore there in Paxton, and I was an apprentice pharmacist. And my my avocation was to really be, to succeed him in that drugstore and to be a pharmacist. Marty served our country in the Navy in Vietnam where he received special appreciation from General Creighton Abrams for supporting troop morale with his band, Salt and Pepper. Then came college. And ultimately, I ended up at uh, Southern Illinois University and graduated there with a degree in communications and got my first job in radio at WSON AM and FM in Henderson, Kentucky. Henderson and Evansville is not very far from Carbondale, and he came to visit us. And uh, I knew immediately that he's, he's the person that we should hire as a salesperson. I wasn't the manager of the station that time. I always kidded Marty, he's quite a bit older than, than I am. Truthfully, we're about two or three years apart. But uh, that's how we came to know each other, and that uh, association lasted for 13 years. I, I got the call from uh, a friend of mine to interview with John Mitchell uh, at uh, Mitchell Broadcasting in Omaha. And KQKQ, Sweet 98 it was called, was a legendary radio station by the time I got there. And uh, my job was to, uh, to go up against uh, a very uh, competitive situation. Marty was with Mitchell and was managing Sweet 98 and Company. And I was working for one of the last independent radio stations in Omaha at that time, Light 96. And though we were direct competitors, the stations sounded substantially different. Then there was Metro Omaha Radio Broadcasters Association and Marty was a part of that, of course, and that's when I first met him, and I was so impressed. He has so many skills, so many talents, he's so likable, a great musician, too, but Marty and I just kind of hit it off. I uh, moved to Omaha in October of 1989 uh, to be the sales manager at KEZO Z92, and Marty was the general manager of the Mitchell Properties and KQKQ was Sweet 98 back then, our primary competitor and that is how we met. He was great as a competitor but I was a 24 year old first time manager who had come into a new town so I was looking over my shoulder a good bit and uh, knowing that Marty and, and his DOS Dan Charleston uh, who both became dear friends in time you know were uh, doing everything they could to compete aggressively with us. Uh, I'd say I learned a lot uh, as a competitor. He was a very good competitor. And we did big promotions and we were very successful financially and, and working for John Mitchell was was a joy and it was it was an indeed a, a family operation. We started doing mega concerts and we had Sweet Stock which brought in top flight entertainment uh, and we would get 25,000 people at a location. We had Edge Fest which had, was done at Exarvin at the time. Uh, still holds one of the records as one of the most attended concerts ever and it was a lud very lucrative for us uh, as well as great exposure. Marty built up Nebraska broadcasters from what previous people had already done great job with, including Dick Palmquist. But Marty took that association and made it his project and helped radio and TV both equivalently through a number of extraordinary issues that happened during that time, the first decade of the 21st century. And using his sales abilities and just his persona, he built something virtually again from ground zero, and it's very impressive what he did. He asked me to get more involved in the Nebraska broadcasters, and, and I can say with all sincerity that the only reason I got heavily involved was because of Marty and because of the job he's done there. I think when you look at Marty's track record with our uh, federal delegates in particular, he built great relationships. Um, everyone knew him by name, respected him, respected what broadcasters stood for, and the kind of support we needed on some of the issues that affected our member TV and radio stations. He was able to get those folks to see things our way and give our member stations the kind of support they needed. I was chairman for uh, the 2004 and then again in 2014. Uh, we needed more funding and so he hit the ground running getting more NCSA announcement sold to fund. He looked at the foundation and saw that maybe some of the investments weren't the most wisely placed and took some experts and had them take a look at the financial state of the, of the uh, 
uh, the foundation and, and got them involved, uh, got it involved in some investments that paid off over, over the long term. Well, I was privileged to, to be asked by the Nebraska broadcasters to uh, consider a call-in show. Uh, I thought, well, maybe once a year, twice a year, something like quarterly maybe, uh, but uh, we did it far more often. Marty was uh, really the driving force uh, to kill what was called the, uh, well, the, the local uh, uh, Radio Freedom Act uh, to fight against having uh, char uh, fees charged to broadcasters uh, for local uh, productions and local uh, uh, airings and stuff like that. It was, uh, it was just it was a, a wrong-headed bill, uh, but it had steam, and it looked like it, it might pass. Uh, until Marty and, and, and some others from the uh, national broadcasting uh, broadcasters uh, came in. Marty worked with our staff, worked with me, uh, and he was a driving force in making sure that that didn't happen. Well, we enjoyed a great relationship with the Nebraska broadcasters. They're important to this state, uh, the work they do every single day, and it starts with Marty. Marty earned very special recognition when he received the Dean's Award from UNL. And the scholarships awarded to future broadcasters by the NBA are now named in his honor. Marty has provided exemplary leadership and service to the broadcasters of Nebraska. And tonight, we recognize his achievements and contributions. I salute Marty. He, he deserves this. He's worked hard, as I'm sure you folks in Nebraska know. And I was just honored to work with him. So, Marty from everyone whom I've ever worked with in Omaha Radio. We all wish you the very best. We just know that you deserve to be in the Hall of Fame as much as anyone that's ever been elected. Thank you again. Marty, you deserve to be in the Hall of Fame. You're a great friend, a true professional, and we all love you. Please join me in wishing him all the best in his retirement. Uh, there was not a finer, classier, more thorough, dedicated broadcaster uh, that I've ever worked with in my 28 years of doing this, so hats off to Marty. Marty, it's uh, my honor and my privilege to congratulate you on being uh, now a member of the Hall of Fame. You, you deserve it, uh, and uh, I know others who are, are sharing in your joy, uh, they all know how, how hard you've worked on behalf of the broadcasters. I'm happy to be able to say congratulations uh, to my good friend. Marty, congratulations. Um, this is an honor that you have certainly earned and deserve, and I'm so grateful that you're a first ballot, unanimous Hall of Famer, and glad that you can have so many of your family and friends with you here tonight to enjoy this, this very special celebration. Please welcome Marty Raymond Schneider to the Nebraska Broadcasters Association Hall of Fame.